Hey, we're X Lovers. We just did an interview at the Zach Sang Show. We talked about our childhood. Um, we talked about is love ever easy? Stick around to find the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. Zach Sang Show. Hello, beautiful human. Dan is here. Yeah. We also welcome to the studio two people, <laughs> good people, ex lovers of each other. Uh, no, nah, just best friends. <laughs> Great question, though. Everyone asks that. London and Jacob. All right. London Jackson, Jacob James. Are those real names? Yeah. Real talk? Real talk. That's a real last name? Oh, uh, Jackson's my middle name. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and London's my first name. Yeah, like they're that. both our first and middle names. Yep. Ah. Oh. Mm-hmm. What's your, do you have a last name? No. <laughs> what is on your driver's license? <laughs> Show me now. Yeah. So, uh, like, what kind of decision, what kind of conversation happens when you're like, uh, maybe I'm going to go without my last name. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move up my middle name. I'm going to give that the light. It's just always what I did. I don't know. You know, I was actually, when I when I grew up and when we grew up together, all my friends, my parents actually called me by my middle name, which is Jackson, right? And then we got into high school and just, like, on Roll Streets, whatever it was called. What's, what are those called? Roll Call? Roll, roll call. call, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell i didn't do high school that well <laughs> um no nah, they would always say london right because that was my first name and everyone started calling me london so i thought london jackson just felt natural at that, that point it sounds like royalty thank you good name good appreciate name. that zach have you been to london yeah I have. D did you feel obligated to go no nah, um you know, I actually hate introducing myself to any British people because I say, like, hi, I'm London. I swear I think they're trolling. They think I'm trolling, like, every time, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've heard it so many I've times. Heard it, I like, heard it with the girl that you met named Paris. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm Paris, and you're like, hey, I'm London, and she just, like, thought you were messing with her. And I like, got really upset. Like, she yeah. was upset. Yeah. But you weren't. You were just trying to be you. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to be myself, you know? So the two of you meet. You're 10 years old mm -hmm. in California. Yeah. You grow up together. We met a little bit. We talked at E3. Yeah. But, but do you remember, and we'll dive into the records, but do you remember the first time you guys played together? Yeah. Or the second, like, one of you had the idea to even make music? Yeah. Like, the first time we played together is literally probably the most vivid moment of my life still to this day. I was writing songs at the time, and I, I met Jake through our little sisters, and we just had amazing chemistry as friends. Like, we became best friends the first time we hung out. And I was like, Jake, you have to learn how to drum to my songs. And he was like, okay. Like, <laughs> Jake's voice was quite high at the time. We were 11, right? And I so remember the first time it was in like my parents' living room. We bought this like trash drum set at a garage sale. I had this tiny amp with my guitar. And I had this song called The Roof, which we actually recorded. It's the first song we ever made together. And yeah, like we finished that song. We played it through. Jake somehow just had it in him and played to the song. We were like, yo this is what we're doing for our careers point blank period like i swear to god i'm not making any of that up like that was our mentality from the moment we play music together but like you had been writing records or trying to but you <laughs> yeah. never really played music before that moment yeah i had like gone on the drums once or yeah. twice there was like the interest from like seeing like the muppets and there was like <laughs> animal like of course every so every fun. drummer <laughs> says that it's such a stereotypical <laughs> answer but but it's but it's true and then it wasn't until like we actually met that he was like you should actually play drums like yeah. for real what do it, it with me what is roof about um it was it was really depressing i think the, the lyric was you're on the roof trying to get down you're on the edge trying to be found and i was in sixth grade and feeling that way i guess wow <laughs> yeah I actually, it's funny, you know, we released a song called Cold When It Rains like a couple months ago and the bridge of that song is like really punk and like angsty and that's how the roof sounded and that's how all of our music sounded back then and it's funny, like I think with our new music we've actually found a little bit of like our 11 year old selves in it, like mm -hmm. just not caring at all, you know what I mean? And just being loud and like disgusting I and mean, that's all it was when we were 11 but we've brought a little of that back because like yeah, well, I love that. <laughs> yeah. So the angstiness still exists, mm -hmm. but like, what is that evolution like between Roof and even if you go back to like a record like Easy? If we mm -hmm. go into your like 2018 releases, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of time in between there. Yeah. Are, are you just writing a ton of songs? Yeah. Are you putting them out there? Are you yeah. just keeping them for yourself? Um, we didn't release a ton of music growing up. We like toured around California, specifically Northern California, a ton. We played. We played like hundreds of shows. Right. We. Built like an amazing culture up 
and you're playing all originals. Yeah, all originals. And it was crazy. Like, it was just word of mouth. We would play in front of, like, hundreds of people all around Northern California. We hadn't released, like, one song. It was just this crazy word of mouth thing. It's actually going to be really wild as we start touring, like, in the next, like, six months or whatever. We're, like, it'll be, like, the same feeling, but the first time people actually, like, know our songs. It's going to be such a different thing. But, um, yeah, we didn't release a ton of music. We would release, like, a song here and there, but we were just, like, obsessed it wasn't even like yo we want to do music we just needed to do it you know i mean just like what we did always and every single day day in and day out we were just practicing writing touring and then i guess when we graduated high school we were like yo let's move to la it felt like the right move we'd saved up some money from touring around northern california and that's when jake like really dove into production and that's kind of like what defined what x lovers like now is we really just started making the music 100% on our own. I wrote everything. Jake produced everything. And that's how it kind of came to, like, easy. How old are you guys now? 21. So you're still super young. Yeah. <laughs> when you, do you even, like, how do you structure a song when you're 11 years old? Mm. Like, how do you even, how do you know that you should sit down and write a record? Yeah, it's, like, the same exact as is now. It's just intuition. Like, we don't know how to make music. We just do, like, what we want to do. And I think... You know, that's why it's starting to actually naturally grow is because it's like our feelings is just what we make. Or It sounds like kind of cliche, but it's just a fact. Like we just follow our intuition in every way. And I think that's why our music comes out. It's just like the most honest, just us music. You know what I mean? And that's what we do when we were 11. It's just a more refined version. It's like we put in the 10,000 hours to make it hopefully sound good. Like it didn't sound good back then, but it was still like pure. You know what I mean? It was us. But who tells you that like the feelings you're, you have inside should be like expressed through pen and paper when you're 10. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Like how do you know to form that into some form of a poem Yeah. that you then can like, you can then drum to? I mean, I think like I grew up in an artistic household, right? Like not like a musical household, but my mom specifically is just one of the most like artistic people I've ever met like if you go in our house there's art everywhere right and I think it just like lived within me kind of I mean I actually a crazy thing about myself is I could write songs before I could read I was like writing poems I just always did it and that's why I say it's like even to this day when I sit down to write a song I'm not like I'm not the kind of writer who can sit down and be like I want to write a great song today I'm the kind of writer where it's like yo some happen i need to sit down and write a good song today or write a song today and hopefully it's good <laughs> it's not about good or not you're doing it more because you, you need, need to, to yeah. yeah you need it to move on from whatever you experienced mm-hmm. or what um i think it's different every time like with the song king of capulet released about a month and a half ago that was just like a celebration song we just signed a record deal to visionary we were feeling like on top of the world for a second and it was like that song represents that, right? Like, we just released a song called Spitfire. But, but by the way, like, yeah. the, the title to me, like, even though it, there's the word king in there, yeah. like, <laughs> you don't really want to be a Capulet, don't, do you? Like, in the world of Shakespeare? Aren't yeah. they the ones, don't you want to be a Montague? Yeah, to be honest, I didn't really, like, do my studying before I wrote that song. I just thought it sounded really cool. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it's still, still, though, it was, like, royal. Like, that was the whole thing. The Capulets were still a royal family, but the song, actually, if you, like, look in, like, look in the lyrics, it's actually not all, like, happy it's like there's there's tragedy at feeling like on top of the world too you know what i mean it's like there's so it was kind of like about that like feeling like yo when you're when you feel like king it's actually there's actually like a lot of loneliness that comes with that right and it's like i don't know does that make sense so you get this record deal and you're inspired by that moment by writing this record king of capulet yeah and how I understand that there's loneliness and there's yeah. always a downside because you can only, when you're up, there's always going to be a down. Yeah. How do you, like, one, how do you come across the title? And, yeah. like, at what point do you title it? Because that was the, like, I was just trying to figure out if there were Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet references yeah. through the record, but they're not. But the more you talk about it, the more the whole thing makes sense to me. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So how do you come up with that title? Well, you know what? And I'm going to let you talk about this. Like, talk about the school we went to. Because I think that just explains, <laughs> like, everything. Yeah. It, um. So we basically went to a school where you're raised, like, through a lot of arts and crafts. There's a lot of, like, hands-on activity. It's called, like, Waldorf education. Cool. Um. And... We definitely believed in gnomes until we were like in like third grade, maybe fourth grade. <laughs> <I> <laughs> too old, <laughs> too old to believe in gnomes. Um, but yeah, so they raised us to really just kind of think for ourselves. But um, also, what I was 
trying well, well, to get you well, to allude to is we did a lot of Shakespeare plays at the school. Like yeah. they would make us in like fifth or so. It was just subconsciously there. And I was like, in the moment that I wrote the song, I was like, yo, I feel royal right now. Hey, beautiful human. I got these on Deal Dash. Yeah. Here's the deal. <laughs> I'm going to tell you about Deal Dash. This is a flashlight that I got from Deal Dash. I should stop waving it around. Deal Dash is pretty great. When I was first, like, totally exploring the internet, I came across these bidding websites early on, like, 2008, 2009. I was just trying to get stuff cheap, and I was a kid. And they all scammed me. And then Deal Dash was born. They have rethought what it means to bid for things online. They've created a fair community, a fair place for you to actually spend your money honestly and to get really cool stuff in the process for a much cheaper price. If you're interested at all in like exploring what Deal Dash is and what it means to bid on something, DealDash.com exists. There's going to be a link in the bio. They have reimagined what it means to bid. I want to wave this around because I'm so passionate about them. But that is not a good thing. I got this speaker. It's pretty cool from Deal Dash as well. Um, but always free shipping when you use Deal Dash. I can try this stuff out and then return it. I have 90 days to do that. Plus, they're offering hundreds of auctions every single day on a ton of different stuff. Want a dashboard camera? I got one of those from Deal Dash. Sunglasses with many frames. I got one of those from Deal Dash. It's uh, pretty cool. If you're actually interested in trying it out, I got a pretty cool deal for you. Right now, you can go to DealDash.com and get 100 bids with your first bid pack purchase. Go to DealDash.com and just enter the code Zach Sang right now. DealDash.com. Zach Sang, you can start bidding today. By the way, people have gotten iPads for less than $24. They've spent $11 on televisions. Oh, 4K TVs? They've got it for under $2. DealDash.com. They literally have everything. And it's really the only place to bid fairly. But it's still self-deprecating a little bit. Yeah. I don't know. Because just, you're still acknowledging the lows and yeah, the sadness. Yeah. It, it's, it's almost like hard to explain. It just was like... It's just what I felt in that moment, and this is how we write our song, is just, like, pour it out. And the King of Cap, it, it described, it was, like, the top, of, like, Jake and I have worked for 10 years to make our dreams come true, and they all of a sudden start coming true, and it's, like, amazing. Like, we're so grateful for everything, but then it's, like, all of a sudden, like, we don't know that many people who are experiencing what we're feeling, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, like, the King of Capulets, like, that's a, a grandiose thing, but also, like, that's a lonely place to be. It's, like... It's this weird mixture of like, it's amazing and it's like so dope. And at the same time, it's like Jake and I kind of have each other to share it with. And it's and it's hard to like go back home and explain what we're feeling to friends. So I think that's how we're feeling at the moment. And then just like we like turning simple ideas of like feeling like happy, but kind of lonely in that happiness into something a little bit like larger than life and that's where like the capulet thing came in that's where the shakespeare thing from like middle school i think still like is in my my head all the time you know what i mean so how do you feel after you write that record do you feel reassured in the fact that you you have each other to share this with yeah. do you feel like you have a way to communicate to those who maybe not don't understand you or don't understand what you're going through yeah i think i mean with that song specifically we we're just like damn this is really fun <laughs> like <laughs> that th but yeah i mean that's we communicate through music right i mean i think like any artist like that's just like the best way to get to know us is through our songs you listen to those lyrics it's like i love that somebody could listen to it and feel something completely different to what i felt when i wrote it right and i think that's the beauty of music but like i said it's like i needed to write that it's off my chest and the second it's off my chest i look at it, it's like it's for our fans you know what i mean it's it's for them spitfire build yeah. up these walls so nobody could see me now i'm trapped here and your nose is bleeding. Yeah. It's pretty, uh, I, I feel like cryptic. Yeah, but also very expressive and forward. Mm -hmm. And, and I, how does the, the, the title connect to that, that lyric? Yeah. Um, so Spit, we actually just called that song Spitfire because when I was like six or seven, I skated a lot and my favorite brand was Spitfire. So, <laughs> That that song was like when I wrote it, I was really wanting to go back to that time of like just simplicity that I felt when I was obsessed with the brand Spitfire. 
the the title really has nothing to do with the song actually <laughs> um but yeah i mean I, I wrote that song when i was at like height anxiety i was extremely anxious a lot of <laughs> had been going on in my personal life with family um and like that more than any song i've written still to this day like it just needed to come out. I mean, we probably made that song in like 30 minutes. Like, yeah, like I so remember fast. when you like brought that song to me, it was like pretty close to completion. Yeah. And like the idea for the production was was pretty clear from that point on. We just wanted to like keep it simple and have it like support the lyrics and yeah. like the message that it was like getting across 100%. to me. And, and yeah. I remember when, when we wrote that I wrote, I came to Jake with the chorus like one of these nights and I was having to like run a lot when I was feeling this anxiety because I felt so out of body all the time. And I came to him with a song. I was like, yo, here's a song. Like, I'm going to go for a run, produce it. And literally, I went for like a 30-minute run. I came back, and it was done. Like, and that's the song you guys hear. I mean, that song was created instantly. So what is it afterwards? Is that Does that help you heal? Does it help you move yeah. on? Does the anxiety stay with you? Like- yeah, that, that song, at the risk of sounding like extremely cliche, actually like really, really, really helped me. Like, I... It was, like, the closure to, like, a chapter that just needed to be closed. And writing that song was, like, my final thoughts. You know, I have to say, when we released it, it was interesting, like, getting all these DMs and messages of, like, people's experience and how they relate- related to it actually kind of brought me back to that place, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, but now that it's been out for, like, a little over a month or whatever, it's, like, uh, I'm so grateful I wrote that song for two reasons. One, it really helped me and honestly, like, seeing how it affects people is like pretty unreal no because it's it's an accurate record right you build up all these walls you isolate yourself from people Mm -hmm. and like in a sense you almost do it to yourself a hundred percent i think for for me specifically i mean a lot of like my anxiety or or sadness is is because i isolate myself you know what i mean like back to what we were talking with king and capulet on a totally like different subject but like a similar thing it's like in spitfire was feeling so isolated and extremely alone and you know, I think it's cool to see, like, with our fan base now, like, songs like that bringing us together because it actually yeah. subsequently makes us, none of us, as alone, right? As, as funny as it no, sounds. No, there's a community within the it's, records about your isolation. It's strange. Yeah. It's sick. But can you have these records without isolation? I don't think so, for me. I mean, maybe. I don't, you know, I think it's cool, like, life's always changing. That's what keeps me inspired, right? So I think in a year from now, I could be in a totally different place and it could be a totally different subject matter. Where I'm at in life right now, it's like, that's something that inspires me. <laughs> do you usually finish most of the records before you guys get together, or do you write ever together? Yeah, I mean, we so we live together. Like Jake uh. and I do everything together, right? <laughs> I mean, I write some the more emotional ones. I usually write by myself because it's just like in a moment in my room or wherever. Just need to get out. But like, yeah, we write together. I mean, I write everything, but mm. we're in the room together all the time. Like with King Capulet in the room together what about dreams where you are murdered yeah that is like <laughs> i love this <laughs> that's uh stark <laughs> yeah that's I actually like a pretty funny story um that dream or sorry that song stemmed, and dream <laughs> <laughs> right the song stemmed from a dream that i had where i murdered someone else and it was like a extremely shocking and they're like leave <laughs> they're right no yeah yeah Needless who'd you murder say, um, I don't even remember. It was just like, a, like no, there wasn't a face. It was just sure. like, just happened. Right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> he murdered me. <laughs> uh, um, Watch out. No. <laughs> Needless to say, it doesn't. It's never happened to me before. Oh, you've never had dreams about murdering no, someone no, no. or yeah, murdering someone. Yeah. So I woke up Good and to told him about my dream, and coincidentally, you were kind of going through some similar um, dreams. What do you call them? Night terrors? Well, I w- Jake's like, he murdered. I was like having these like actual real life, like horrible dreams for like a couple of weeks. I've been waking up in like night sweats. Oh, wow. I was having those like, it, it was kind of during the time of like that anxiety. Hmm. Um, I was having these horrible dreams and Jake wakes up one day and he's like, yo, I murdered someone in a dream. And I actually texted our manager, Amy, and I was like, yo, dreams where you're murdered. Coolest song title of all time. <laughs> like, yeah. And... We um, kind of approached that one like it's very dark lyrics, but we were like, let's turn this, something very dark into like a really fun energy. Because I think if you listen to that song like on bass level, it actually just sounds really fun. But it's like you dig in and it's a dark story. And I think that's why like I'm super proud of that song for that reason. It doesn't necessarily feel dark. But it was inspired by literally Jake murdering people in his <laughs> dreams, you know? It, it sounds like you're talking to somebody in the record. Mm-hmm. 
Is that wrong? No, I was talking to people in these dreams that were like giving me night tears. I was having these. You like, see, you're communicating with the. A hundred percent. Yeah. Cool. A hundred percent. It's like it. One of the lyrics is f- off. Yeah. All these nightmares are waking me up. Or I think I always get this lyric confused. It's something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you all feel like kind of intertwined. Like you're very much same wavelength here. Yeah. I mean, like I would say that we're we're pretty different people when it comes to our personalities, but we experience like everything together. So there's not a lot of experiences that we can't share and like talk about. Yeah. And like, um, when it comes to making music, it's definitely like a different. We, we both like have different things that we bring to the table. So like I definitely would not consider myself a songwriter. Like I don't really write like any lyrics. Um, you just have dreams about murdering people. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> no, but like, our, like just in being like we're so intertwined because, because A, we just have a natural chemistry as friends. We've had that from the jump. It's like we're still best friends after living together like basically for mm-hmm. 10 years. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, Jake was at my parents' house all day, every day from 11 years old. And we moved, it was like, when we moved to LA, we shared one room, like a studio, like 300 square feet. Jake and I were like sleeping in a bed right next to each other. Our studio is in the same room. Like we do everything together. So it's like, beautiful. we're opposite, but completely like intertwined. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, like, I totally we're understand so different, it. But yeah, I mean. Your energy is like very and, and you know what? If we weren't so different, like we wouldn't, be be able to do this like it's it's what like that opposites attract thing i mean it's so true with at least like our, our relationship our friendship it's like we've always provided like super different things you know what i mean and it's like even just on like a friendship level like it, yeah it just it complements each other and it's 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 dope i mean we feel so like we've been talking about a lot recently it's like as stuff's actually starting to happen, like what we've wanted for 10 years, we've worked our asses off for 10 years. It's like, we're still best friends doing this. Like who gets to say that, you know, from 11 Very years few. old? Like that's that's just amazing. I started my radio show with my best friend. That's amazing. We haven't spoken in uh, <laughs> <laughs> it <works>. like 13 <laughs> years. She <laughs> should. <laughs> Shout out to your best friend, man. Shout yeah. out to Paul. Or maybe not your best friend. Paul. No, no longer. Yeah. Your ex-lover? Yeah. <laughs> Shouts, Paul. He wishes. <laughs> uh, Colder when it rains. Great, great record. Thank you. Um, distance is vicious. I agree with that. Yeah. Are you talking? I mean, like, what is that? Is it about being apart from the one you love? Is it? Yeah, it's about someone I, I like had on and off stuff with from like really young, from probably like eighth grade, right through high school. Ooh. And but never like something serious. We never dated. It was just always this like on and off chemistry almost. It and was me. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, no. no um love is love is love is love is love <laughs> there exactly we go. Um, exactly but we visited home and i saw her and i came back to la and i wrote the song it, it's very simple i say i miss you like a billion times in it <laughs> it's just about that like it's just like you have an amazing moment with someone and it was just about missing her and also i think like seeing people from home i don't have like the greatest relationship with their hometown but it, but there is a nostalgia that comes with it like the simplicity of just i think being really young you know what i mean what's your problem with your hometown do they not understand you yeah i never felt super understood there and it's like it's all it's all love like i have no problem with it it's just like jake and i were always vocally extremely driven to be successful in music i mean you would see us at 12 years old i'd be like dude we didn't practice for eight hours like what's wrong with us i mean it's like we always had that energy kind of and i think but what motivated that like what fueled it i literally i don't know was it getting out of the city Mm -hmm. of the town no i think you know i think like i don't think we were born with talent or anything i think we were just born with like drive I, i i can't explain it it's just it's how we've been from the start like like i said the first time we ever played music together was like in our heads there was no option there was no plan b i don't really know what it was i think we, the environment we grew up in and something i actually it's probably a combination of the two right yeah the environment think, you grew up in and drive yeah and i and i do think i'll say like about our hometown it's this tiny tiny town in northern california called nevada city three thousand people live there and it's like a strange hippie little place and i think the one thing I love about it is, like, you could just be who you were. You know what I mean? So we were always, like, comfortable just being us. I That's think really rare, by the way. It is super rare. And and I think it works so well, like, moving to L.A. because we had grown up being like, yo, we don't need to be a certain way. And we kind of still have that energy even being in a place 
in an industry where so many people say like be like this be like this we're like nah like we're just gonna be ourselves it's like but i think to answer your question like like why i felt misunderstood there is i think something small talents kind of have sometimes it's like people don't get out right and felt that with a lot of like our acquaintances and i and i always felt like looked down upon for like vocally saying yo like we're gonna be a massive band you know what i mean we're gonna like make our dreams come true and i think naturally everyone was just like yeah right <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. so it's like um but i love that too but that like, motivates you even i more. love that i feed off of that it's cool yeah it's very very cool yeah i love your nails thank you they're red we couldn't tell. <laughs> you know, I'm colorblind, so honestly, like, no Jay way. Tell me. <laughs> yeah. Are you colorblind? Uh, like with certain colors, yeah. It's it's it must be so annoying for our team because I'm also like super involved. Like I direct our videos with like our guy Bryce. <laughs> I I'm a, like with the merch that's gonna come. I'll be designing that. You know what I mean? It's like so I have to be like, yo, like that's too pink, and they're like, dude, that's not pink. <laughs> that's actually <laughs> yellow. Yeah, communicating like colors like must be so frustrating. <laughs> Should love be easy? Um. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Um. <laughs> I think you wrote it. it. Yeah. No. I think anything like worth having isn't easy at all. I think like because I. I mean, I look at like I. I've never been actually in like a super serious relationship. No, just um, this girl that you uh, flirted with and yeah. <laughs> and look at from a distance. Yeah. <laughs> Very sketchy the way you described that relationship. <laughs> God, Zach, putting me on the spot. Almost alarming. Yeah. <laughs> Nah, um, I think anything, like, amazing is going to have, like, hard aspects. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I, I don't know. Right. You know, I, I can only speak to myself. Like, I think even, like, creatively, like, what makes our music what it is is, is sometimes those moments of, like, extreme tension. You know what I mean? Where we're very frustrated with each other. It's like, so I think that's probably essential in anything, anything, like, worth fighting for is gonna come with challenges right no i totally I, mean, I don't agree. know but I, that's I, my opinion i think i don't think love should be easy because then what is it to you yeah, right like if you don't have to work for something or go through trials and tribulations to yeah. get to the end of something then yeah. what is it at the end of it 100 right. percent. i know? couldn't agree more yeah, yeah. You, you care more about something you fight for yeah 100 totally and like you have to like earn that respect and like love along the way it doesn't matter if we're talking about like actual like relationships or just like our relationship as like our friendship yeah. constantly progresses. It's like we're working on the music to we we want it to like amount to what we see in our heads, but there's constant struggle and like roadblocks in a way that we have to push past. And we're trying to be like more gracious with ourselves in that and not beat ourselves up too much when something's not like clicking. But that being said, we got to where we are now because of like the perseverance yeah. to just not give up and like 100%. Yeah. And we're yeah. closer friends, like, as a because result. You know what I mean? It's I like, it. like, Jake and I have seen, Jake's seen me specifically in, like, lows. You know what I mean? And he's been the most amazing friend through that. And then we've, like, we're also experiencing our dreams coming true at 21. You know what I mean? So it's like, I yeah, I think, I just don't think you can have, like, real love without going through that. It's like, life happens, right? And it's, I think... So I don't know. I mean, if so, if if there's someone who can be, can like come to me and say, "Yo, like you can have the most amazing love without experiencing any negativity," like <laughs> I'm open. <laughs> you know? yeah. Probably not gonna happen. Probably not gonna happen. Yeah. What are you thinking over there, Daniel? I just don't know why your Instagram account is private. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to change the subject. <laughs> uh, nah. Um. We just we were just doing that for like a month because. Literally, when you accept people, it just notifies them. <laughs> so, uh, <okay. laughs> yeah. So you want people to like? Well, because it just makes them come to your page. Oh. Yeah. We're probably not gonna be private that long. I got. I feel like I requested to follow you at Maybe. E3. Maybe I didn't. Maybe you didn't. <sighs> now I feel very out of the loop. Yeah. <laughs> when do we have more music coming? Um, this fall, like late September. Do we have an album? Do we have an EP? What do What do we want? Because yeah. you're just gonna do you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, we're gonna come out with singles and EP this fall. We're super thrilled. That's what we're working on right now. We're like, it's definitely the best music we ever made. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. It's gonna be cool because we we've been looking at things at like our career like layers, and I feel like we're going to layer two right now because we built a pretty awesome foundation this summer that like we have an amazing community now, right? And 
So this is the first time like going into it. That, like we know there's people who are actually waiting and excited. It's it's actually an exciting feeling. And yeah, I think I don't know. We're all. I think a beauty of like our friendship is we're not afraid to like just push the f- out of each other, right? So, I mean, w- we constantly are just working on pushing our music forward. And is it just going to be the two of you? Because th- these songs are just the two of you. Yeah, these are. Um, it's probably it's mostly going to be. There's I think. There's actually one song that one of my best friends wrote. We didn't even write, actually. And it's crazy because, like, we do 100% of everything else. Yeah. And a good friend of mine sent me the song. And I was just like, yo, I've been trying to write this for months. And you just said it so much better than me. Is that um, going to be the first time you take on somebody else's record? Yeah, 100%. How is that? Is it cut? Have you cut it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was it hard? What was that process No, nah, it like? was like, it just... I mean, granted, the person who wrote is like one of my best friends. I mean, she's like a sister to me, and so you like, knew the, the her voice and how she. Yeah, spoke but she and- sent it, and she didn't even send it to me like, saying like she didn't send it to me like, "Yo, um, you should cut this." It was like, "Yo, listen to the song I just wrote," <laughs> and I was like, "Yo, I need this," um, <laughs> because yeah, I think like it. She wrote it about her ex boyfriend. It hit me about something completely different, and she just said these words. I was like, "Yo, this." describes exactly how I'm feeling right now. So I feel completely comfortable with it. I think it's like, I'm proud of the fact that Jake and I make 99.9% of our music. Like, I think it's dope. But I also have no problem saying, like, I'm open to, like, cutting a song if it speaks to me. I Like, yeah. we're, we're going to make it a Next Lover song. You know what I mean? Period. Like, w- like he produced it. And my voice being on it and, like, get like me feeling it in the way I do, I have zero problem saying my best friend wrote this, like, who is it? Like it, Caroline Pennell. She's amazing. She's amazing. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. She actually almost came. She's going to be so happy her name's in this. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to be so happy. <laughs> you have to say she's like the cutest person. I, she's going to like be so happy. <laughs> that makes me happy. Yeah. Hi, Caroline. Yeah. Just Caroline. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Yeah. Yo, dude, you have no idea how happy she's going to be. She almost came. She had a session today. She almost came. Hopefully you get a hit out of the session, mm-hmm. and it's way better than being here, and you get rich off of it. Yeah. Yeah. I hope this for you. Shouts, Caroline. That's great. I'll remember this from the box I live in on the street corner outside of the studio. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... Um, Are, be- your best friend. Caroline. What's the name of the record? Um, mm-hmm. It's currently called Never F- Fall in Love Again, but I, I just like... I like it. Yeah, I think that's... Sorry. What's, that's what How called. dare you. Headphones. <laughs> it's okay. I'm bad. <laughs> Damn it, Jake. <laughs> yeah, never f***ing fall in love again. Are you even going to take that advice? Um, probably not. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna fall in love again. 100%, yeah. But it's crazy. I, I don't want to get into, like, what it's about for me, but it's, like, from my perspective, not a love song, which is which is interesting. I and, feel like a lot of your records are like that. Yeah. I, well, I think that's cool. I think it's, like, you know, my inspiration comes from, like, wherever, like, very, like, different places. And I think, like, our goal always, and this is what we strive for every day, and I don't know if we've gotten here, but it's, like, this is what what can keep the drive so alive in us is like we always reference like green day and kanye because we think those two artists are so amazing at like being bold and unique that it also is mainstream right Mm -hmm. and it's like so we write about these extremely personal experiences or whatever and it's like something i might be experiencing might be so different from how you hear the song but that's that's art but i love that and our goal is just to be good enough at it to where it's like millions and millions of people around the world can feel the same can feel the same emotion while it might relate to something completely different right yeah and that's the power of music like we literally talk about this i don't think there's any other place other than like a concert of your favorite artist where it's like you could disagree with the person you're sitting next to in every single way like everything about you could be opposite but like the second like I don't know. Runaway by Kanye is playing. Unity. Like we agree on everything. Yeah. And that's that's power. Like that's amazing, right? And it's like what we're building with our fan base. It's like I feel kind of weird even calling it our fan base. It's like it feels like an extended family yeah. all around the world and I'm just excited as we keep growing to see like the actual change we can do with that. Like it's exciting. Giddy up. Yeah. Bring it on. Yeah. How many records do we have done? Um we we write so many songs, but like ready to go, probably like five or six for the next chapter. Yeah, uh-huh. we we kind of try not putting like, because we work every day all day on music for not doing something like this. Thanks for distracting us. <laughs> <laughs> all my fault. By the way, you've been working every day since you were ten. Yeah. Um, 
but we try not putting like a ton of time into into records that we don't feel like we're gonna like finish right so at what point do you know that you're not gonna finish it like within the first hour i mean it's we all the songs you just mentioned were written probably another two hours and wow. and basically produced i mean well then we'll spend like days like finessing and like doing jake's like a master with details like i can't Thanks. do that <laughs> but the actual idea and like the energy is pretty immediate with like the best ones is there any nerves bringing somebody else into the room with you two because you are like this i mean i think when we moved to la um a couple years back it was kind of when we were like starting to learn how to produce and we did a lot of sessions with other people it just kind of like naturally worked out that way um but now that we're working so much just on our own music and it's been so long just collaborating the two of us um it it's not a weird vibe bringing other people in but it can just be challenging to like find where they fit in mm -hmm. to like what we do yeah jake um, and i are intertwined as you say like there's yeah, just you're... a flow it's we don't talk we just like like do you know what i mean it's just like we just mm -hmm. have a language that i'd imagine like i know what it is but i imagine no, no. one else could understand it right no like way. but I, but i think with like the right people it could be great it's like something we're open to it's yeah. just you know jake and i definitely have a chemistry that's like i i think it's unique have we started on our live show yet um we've done like hundreds of shows just the two of you younger yeah but like under x lovers with the new music we we're gonna start like really honing that in in the next few months we kind of approach everything like not when the opportunity is there take it it's like when there's demand for the, for it right so like with touring like yeah, like maybe we could start doing that now, but I think Went in there. six months it's gonna be like crazy. You know what I mean? Louder. Yeah. Manifest it. Hundred percent. Speak it into existence. I believe 100%. in that. Cool. Yeah. So we have an EP coming in singles. Mm-hmm. Good to know. Yeah. Will what? you listen? Of course. <laughs> Uh, you pinky promise? I, yeah, give me that red. <laughs> I've listened to all the other records you got out there in the public. Awesome, appreciate that. I'm freaking Thanks, up today man. on the ex lovers uh, discography. Yeah, and dude, I mean, we're. I want to say like just being here, like we're a fan of yours, and it's kind of cool, like speaking about like all the coming into existence. Like, I mean, we've watched like a lot of your interviews, and we were driving here in our Toyota truck today, like. <laughs> Yo, we're doing this. Like, it's crazy. Like, honestly, I mean that. And, like, you're so good good at what you do. It's like, I, I'm i like, I'm grateful to be here, dude. Like, that, genuinely. For real. And, and yeah. it, it gives me goosebumps. <laughs> We've talked a lot. <laughs> I, yeah, sorry. I'm very distracted over here. <laughs> no, I've learned everything that I know from Dan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not true. <laughs> Damn, shade. <laughs> it's How, obvious. What you, <laughs> what you gonna you say, man? <laughs> He can say what he wants. <laughs> I'll be all right. <laughs> no, that really does. Th that means more than you'll ever know because I, it's, it's it's cool to. I don't know. It's, it's it's very cool, and I understand. I understand your trajectory and where you've come from and how hard you work because yeah. I've done it in my own way. Yeah, hundred percent. Just in a parallel field that Absolutely. is a different craft, but they work together it's for the each same, other. It's the same thing. Like I, I talked to. I mean, I've become so close with Chris Aru, who like runs yeah. Visionary. He's like my big brother. Like Amy, our manager. It's like. They're on the business side of what we do or like they're entrepreneurs it's the same thing it's just your product is different or whatever you know what i mean 100%. but it's like the mentality the work that goes in and it's like the confidence it takes to like start something i yeah. i respect the shit out of anybody who can successfully do that amen yeah. and, and thank you for being here and giving me your energy and one giving your energy to our videos uh, but really i just i love music more than anything music has changed my life yeah. saved my life all of it so it's what fascinates me. And you guys yeah. got great records. They're Thank super you, unique. Thank you so I much, really appreciate that. The production is stellar, dude. Yeah. And Thank the you. lyrics and the stories you're telling, they're different. Thank you very much. Really I, appreciate that. I f with the art. Thank you, dude. Ex lovers. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for having yes. us, man. Thank you, guys. Love. I really hope you enjoyed that conversation. If you did, please subscribe and also check out our podcast. There's a link in the description. And also comment and like and do things. Other interviews are on the screen somewhere. So click them. Thanks for watching.